Hi, this is Dr. Andrew Chrysler teaching ECE 2205 at Idaho State University. This video is going to be a short introduction to AC analysis. Uh, the rest of this video series will also cover some introductory uh, mathematics that we need to cover in order to get into AC analysis. So this is chapter 7 in the circuit analysis and design textbook. Now what is AC analysis and what is our goal in this chapter 7? So our goal is to determine the steady state response of a linear circuit to an AC signal. So basically what we want to do is we want to determine like what is going on inside of this circuit. Like what is the current here? What's the voltage here? These types of things uh, in response to a AC signal. And this AC signal, VS, this is some uh, cosine or sinusoidally varying signal in the time domain that we have as an input. And the reason that this is kind of tricky, right, is because we know that the current in the capacitor uh, changes with respect to time. And we know that the voltage in that inductor uh, is changing also as the current changes with respect to time. So the voltage and the current here, right, these require derivatives in order to find the solution. Now, if you have an input source like this one, that's a cosine wave, and you're doing a lot of these derivatives, and then this is gonna also result in integrals. If you're doing a bunch of these, that's gonna turn into some pretty tricky math. And so we need some way to reduce that complexity. How can we get away from doing uh, these derivatives and integrals and get back to the more simple circuit analysis that we saw previously for our DC circuits? Now, this is an important thing to do because sinusoidal inputs are very common to electronic circuits. Uh, furthermore, almost any periodic signal, or I mean any periodic signal, the, can be represented as a series of sinusoids. So any type of periodic signal, that could be something like a, a sawtooth wave or a rectangular pulse, right? We could actually represent that as sinusoids. So, even if your input signal doesn't look like this, electrical engineers like to imagine input signals. We like to build them up as a, a summation of, of signals that look like this uh, cosine or uh, summation of these. And so understanding how to analyze a circuit like this with an input like this one is something that's important. And as we've already seen, this time domain solutions, they can be a little bit cumbersome because these uh, derivatives are not always easy to do. Now, previously, we did do some other, uh, some other things similar to this, right? We looked at circuits that did have uh, Ls and Cs. So we did some RC and LC circuits, and we, what we found was the transient response. So in this case, right, we are, we're going to try to find the steady state response. Previously, we looked at transient responses already to this, and, um, but now we're going to look at steady state responses. Now, in order to find steady state responses to these AC circuits with R's, L's, and C's, we're going to need to do a little bit of review from our trigonometry class and anywhere that you learned complex numbers. That's going to be something that's important for us to do in, before we get into the real AC analysis. The reason for that, that um, is, is this relationship, this Euler formula, where we can represent complex numbers as this e to the j, or we can represent it as in this rectangular form where it is a cosine and a sine wave. Now this relationship is going to allow us to do something really special, which is create this domain transformation. So once, once we apply this Euler formula, it's going to allow us to go back and forth between the time domain, which is what we used before, and something that we're going to call the frequency or phasor domain. Now, there is a way that we're going to be able to represent all types of circuits like this in this frequency domain. And we're going to work through in this chapter, we're going to work towards being able to represent circuits in the phasor domain. But in order to get there, we're going to have to do some review of waves, so cosine waves and sine waves, and as well as their relationship to complex numbers, which is encapsulated by this Euler formula. And our ultimate goal is going to be to find solutions to AC circuits just like this one in what we're going to be calling the phasor domain. So as we go through this section, we're going to be putting our sinusoidal signals into what we call a functional or standard form. 
So we want to be able to represent the sinusoid signals, so that voltage input. We want to be able to represent it in a, a standard way so that we can apply it across many problems. And this is what our standard form is going to look like. Notice it's a cosine wave. It has a amplitude, it has a radial frequency, and it has a phi, which is a reference angle. This type of functional form of the cosine wave uh, can be represented here. Now, we are typically right using this in the radial form, but there's a conversion between the frequency in hertz and the radial frequency, also between the period and the frequency. Uh, there's a number of useful relationships over here on the right hand side. You've probably seen most of these in a trig class before. So you might need to use some of these at times, although there's a, uh, just a couple that are really helpful. Now, furthermore, this functional or standard form, the basic case looks like this, where we have a V is equal to zero, and that is represented by the blue wave here. Uh, we call this the reference wave when phi is equal to zero. There's no extra phase to it. However, we could have a negative phi, and that is given by V1. And we say that this, when we have a negative phi, that our wave is lagging this, refer this bluish purple reference wave. Whereas if phi is greater than zero, like in this case, it is leading the reference wave. Now, one thing to note is that in this case, right, we're dealing with just looking at the math here, and we are giving the phi as uh, something radial, right? So in this case, it was pi fourths. However, you'll often see the phi being given in degrees. So take note of that. In our standard form, right, this amplitude will be in volts or current. This frequency is going to be in radians per second, and this will be in degrees, but we know conversions between those two from our previous classes. Now there's a helpful cookbook that I've made for those of you in my class, and that is on our Moodle page, and it has a number of relationships, including the complex numbers here. And then this identity, this is the main one that we're going to be using frequently in this chapter. So thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.